everybody, welcome to the channel, and if you are returning, welcome back. My name is Eric with Two Guys in a Cooler, where you'll almost always only see one guy, and you'll almost never see a cooler. I'm glad you can make it. In today's video, I get to share with you a very exciting salami making project that I've been working on for quite some time. And before we begin, I just want to say that this particular video is really more for entertainment purposes only. It's not a very good tutorial. So if you're new to salami making or if you're interested in fermented sausages, stick around to the end of this video where I'll post a couple video suggestions that explain the process a lot more thoroughly. But in today's video, I wanted to make a mosaic salami, one that really had a beautiful stained glass effect. And there were three things that I had to take into consideration. The first was the cut of meat. The second was the type of grind that we were gonna use. And then the third was the color of the salami. Now, when it comes to the cut of meat, each animal, depending on where you pull the meat from, is gonna have a slightly different color. The pork ham, is gonna be a little bit lighter than the pork shoulder. And also, same thing with the beef. If you're using eye of round, brisket, chuck, each one of them is gonna have a slightly different tint of red. Each one of the salamis that we made in this video today have the exact same amount of meat and fat. So we used pork shoulder, pork ham, beef brisket, and beef eye around with a 30% back fat. So the real only difference between these salamis, at least visually speaking, is gonna be the way that we ground the meat and the color that we chose to add. And so that's really the overall um, experiment. And at the end of this video, we get to see the results. So the very first salami that we made was a black salami. And the way we ground this salami meat was we took half the meat and fat and ground it through a six millimeter plate. And then we took the meat only, ground that through a kidney plate by itself. And then we took the fat only and ground that through a coarse plate. Let me show you what that looks like. And for the next salami, which is the white salami, what we ended up doing was taking half the meat and fat, grinding it through a six millimeter plate, and then the rest of the meat and fat and grinding that through the kidney plate, uh, just to see what the different grind would look like on the white salami. The final salami was the orange salami, and the way that we ground that was literally to just put everything through the kidney plate. So super coarse grind, as you can see, right here, and uh, we're gonna see what the differences look like here at the end. All right, let's talk about color. For the black salami, I'm gonna be using cuttlefish ink. I like cuttlefish ink because it brings a very subtle earthy flavor, and it doesn't affect the binding properties of the salami, so we're gonna be using about 1% in the recipe. For the white salami, I'm gonna be using a food grade titanium dioxide. This is a food additive to turn things super white. And for the orange salami, I'm going to be using a natural food coloring called Anato. This is what's used to make cheddar cheese yellow. So that's the three different colors that we're going to be experimenting with. And so let's go ahead and mix everything up. So we're going to start with the black salami. And if you would like to see more experiments where we're using unusual ingredients to produce unique salamis, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comment section below. So at this point, this is just regular salami making. We've added our starter culture, we've added our spices, our cuttlefish ink, and I'm just mixing this until it's nice and sticky. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of our fat. So remember during the grinding process, we ground a good portion of our fat separately. It's been nice and chilled, and now we're just adding that back in. And we're doing this primarily just to see what the results are when it comes to marbling. And so that's the black salami. Let's go ahead and do the orange salami. So this is with the annatto. We've got our spices already in it. We're adding now our starter culture. And aside from the unique coloring, I mean, we're just making a basic salami recipe, nothing too special. We're gonna go ahead and add in the annatto just to see what happens. And this is actually a really, really strong colorant. This is a water-based colorant. 
and a little goes a long way. Trust me on this one. All right, so there is the orange salami. Let's make the white salami. Now remember, a portion of the meat and fat were ground on a six millimeter plate, and then the rest was ground on a kidney plate. And for the white salami, we just took the titanium dioxide and diluted it with a little bit of water, just to dissolve it a little bit. Otherwise, it doesn't incorporate so well. And uh, as you can see, that just brings a lot of white very quickly uh, to this salami. So it's nice and sticky, great protein extraction. You know, when I grab a little handful and I turn my hand upside down, it sticks to my hand. So here's the black salami. This is our orange salami and our white salami. These smell great, by the way. So let's go ahead and get them into a casing and get them ready to start fermenting. I wanted to show you this because this is a great tool to have. This I got from the sausage maker and it's a stuffing horn cleaner and it just saves you a whole lot of time when it comes to cleaning out your stuffing horn. But when it comes to making fermented sausages, you can take the sausage meat that's left in that horn and use it to test the pH once you're done fermenting. This way we don't disrupt what's in our salami chub, you know? So we're gonna test the pH of that little sample right there. And really that's about it. So we're just gonna set that to the side. As far as the salami goes, we're going to poke it with a sausage poker. This is gonna get out any air pockets. I'm gonna brush it down with a mold culture known as Penicillium nalgiavensi, and then I'm gonna weigh it. Uh, by weighing it, I get to record the actual weight, and then I get to record my target weight, and that kind of lets me know when it's gonna be finished. And typically, I try to target anywhere between a 35 and 40% weight loss. I'm now gonna wrap my salami in some cling film because I wanna lock in as much moisture as I can during fermentation. At this point, this salami is ready to start fermenting. So let's go ahead and do the other ones. We're gonna prick them. And we're gonna brush them down with a little mold 600. Uh, we're also gonna weigh it, right? Standard operating procedure. We're gonna record our weight. And then finally, we're gonna wrap our salami in cling film. Now there's a lot of different ways you can ferment your salami. You could place it inside your oven with the light on. You can build a dedicated fermentation chamber. I personally like this method because it is incredibly easy and you don't have to do anything other than wrap your salami in cling film. As long as the temperature in the room that you're fermenting your salami in is adequate for fermentation, you're good to go. So I'm just gonna take these cling film wrapped salami, leave them on my kitchen counter overnight. This process generally takes between 18 to 24 hours. And sometime tomorrow, we'll test the pH and see if we've hit that safe zone. So here's what we're looking at. The starter culture that we added is called Flavor of Italy, and that likes to ferment between 75 and 85 Fahrenheit or 23 and 29 Celsius at a 90% humidity. The pH that we're targeting is anywhere between a 4.9 pH and a 5.2 pH. And like I said earlier, this normally takes between 18 and 24 hours. A few different options for fermenting is to place this into a dedicated fermentation chamber, putting it into your kitchen oven with only the light on. You could do like I'm doing, which is leave it on your kitchen counter wrapped in cling film. You can also vacuum seal and sous vide this or you could place it into a built-on box. It doesn't matter where you place it, as long as the temperature and the humidity are adequate for fermentation. All right, it's been about 20 hours, and we're now gonna go ahead and test the pH to see whether we are in the zone. We're looking for a 4.9 to 5.2, and we're using a pH meter by Apera Instruments to run the tests. If you want more information on this pH meter, I'll put a link in the description box below. Our salami is done fermenting and it's now time to start drying. And this is really where all the magic happens. So we're gonna be placing this in our salami chamber. This is just a modified refrigerator that we built. I'll put a link at the end of this video if you wanna see how we built it. 
And this is where it's going to hang for probably the next two months. Uh, it's going to slowly start to dry. The conditions inside our chamber are 55 degrees Fahrenheit or 13 Celsius with an 80% humidity. And we're targeting a 35 to 40% weight loss. You can hang your salami basically anywhere you want as long as those two conditions are met. 55 Fahrenheit, 80% humidity. So a basement is great, a cellar is great. For me, a modified refrigerator works just fine. And two months later, roughly 65 days, our salami has now hit its target weight. So it's time to take them out of the refrigerator and cut them open and just sort of see what they look like and better yet, see what they taste like. All right, so let's take a look at these salami. And before we start, I'd love to hear what you think about them. So leave me a comment in the comment section below. The white salami looks like it has great particle definition. The different cuts of meat look like they're coming through with the different colors and really nice stained glass effect. Nice bind on this salami. So no problems there. Nice little fat pocket right here on the side. Okay, so let's just give this a little taste and see what that's like. Okay. All right, pretty good, pretty good. Let's go ahead and take a look at the black salami. Now remember the black salami we ground three different ways and we added a good portion of the fat at the end. Um, I am really digging the color contrast of the different cuts of meat that we use. You know, the brisket, the round, the ham and the pork shoulder, that absolutely looks beautiful. You know, when we hold this up to the light a little bit, you really get that feel of uh, the stained glass effect. Let's kind of hold it up next to the white salami and see what that looks like. Wow, both of them look super cool. <laughs> I love that. The salami's got great texture, no problems there, great bind. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Mm. <laughs> That's tasty. Very, very nice, slightly earthy, nothing too overpowering. Really good, really good salami. Both of these have been super good so far. All right, so let's take a look at the orange salami. This was colored with the annatto coloring and we just ground this on a kidney plate. That's it, everything went through it. So the meat and the fat is uh, nice and coarsely ground. Great marbling, beautiful marbling on this one. And I'm loving the size of the meat. I mean, great big fat pieces in there. You could definitely see you know, the different cuts that we used. When I hold it up next to the black salami, I find the black salami to be a little more showy, you know, the contrasting black and white with the deep red. So let's go ahead and give it a taste, see what that's like. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. All right, everybody, what did you think? I can't wait to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. All three salamis were amazing. They had great flavor, great texture. The black salami was very interesting though. I mean, when you start to add cuttlefish ink to the recipe, it does tend to influence the flavor ever so slightly. I mean, it brings a subtle earthiness uh, umami to the overall salami. The titanium dioxide is flavorless. The annatto doesn't have much flavor. And so outside of the way those two look, you really don't know it's there. Although I do have to admit, it is a little strange uh, eating a white salami and a black salami and an orange salami, uh, but the flavors were absolutely amazing. And as far as the overall look for these three salamis, I gotta admit, I'm a little torn. I really like the white salami. I mean, the particle definition is great, but as far as the stained glass effect, I feel that it's lost because there's not a lot of color contrast. The uh, white background with the hues of pink and red sort of all blend together. The black salami, don't get me wrong, absolutely amazing. 
beautiful stained glass effect. I mean, you've got the black background, the ruby red meat, that white fat, they contrast perfectly, but you don't have very good particle definition because that's lost in that cuttlefish ink. And then there's the annatto salami, the orange salami, and I'm loving the grind. I mean, everything through the kidney plate, we've got nice chunky pieces. The marbling is amazing. The particle definition is amazing. But as far as the stained glass effect, it's not nearly as showy as the black salami because there just isn't that big of a contrast within the colors. So where do we go from here? I think it would have been kind of neat to maybe take a little bit of all three flavors and mix those into one sausage. Maybe we'll do that in the future. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for joining us on this experiment. If you have any questions, leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you like this video or got anything out of it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Not only does that let me know you want to see more content like this, but it will also immediately level up your sausage making game. So be sure to hit that button. And speaking of hitting buttons, if you're new to this channel, smash that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be notified of each one of our future uploads. Thanks a lot for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.